Last time we left off with all six amplifiers mounted and boy were they looking sexy. And with the tool makers tightened up nice, we could finally hit the spare bin for some wire. This good old junk bin has saved the day again and again. So as usual, we managed to scrounge up plenty of old trimmings to help wire everything up. Since each connection had to be slightly different than last year, the longer the run, the better. Although recycling is great, it definitely makes more work when it comes to the connections. After all, old terminals can get pretty gunky, so it's always a pain going around cleaning them. This time around, we made sure to prep each lug individually to get that extra bright shine. Just a bit of steel wool and voila, instantly clean. Once the ring terminals were cleaned up, we could focus our attention on the opposite ends. Even when it's not bare, copper oxidizes fairly quickly. So with that in mind, we went around to each wire and made everything nice and fresh. Just another way to maximize our new 30,000 watt upgrades. With the old wires looking like new, it was almost time to crimp on some lugs. Each ring terminal is made from 100% pure copper and silver tin to prevent corrosion. We just need to strip down our zero gauge before busting out the secret weapon. So what is this secret weapon? Well, only the best thing on the face of the planet, it's a hydraulic crimper. Ultra affordable, lots of dies for lots of sizes, literally you just insert your lugs and go to town. Simple as that. To be able to get a nice strong crimp, it's really important to use the right size dies. They come in lots of different sizes, but since we have zero gauge terminals, anything between 50 and 70 should be fine. But of course, every terminal and company is different, so it's best to try them out for yourself. Just turn the valve settings to tighten, place the terminals inside the vise, and start cranking down on those levers. That's when the magic happens. A solid post rises up, puts over 15 tons of pressure on the pins and the dies, and voila, you've got yourself a hulkified crimp. Just gotta add a little bit of heat shrink and she'll be looking real good. So now we're gonna officially test the strength of this crimp uh, by hanging on it. Every little bit of my scrawny self is gonna hang right off this zero gauge from this nail. Hopefully the nail will be able to hold up, but uh, here we go. Bam, just like, oh shit, the nail broke. All right, plan B, old punching bag hanging spot. Hopefully this will be able to do it. My hands are a little bit sweaty, so let's grab it with the coat. Prove some strength here with those hydraulic crimps. Let's hang, check it out guys. I am hanging. I am hanging upside down. Look at that. That's trust right there. Woo! Now that we had most our wires cut to length, we were one step closer to connecting our amplifiers. But first, that meant prepping up 12 pairs of inputs from Toolmaker Metalworks. Each amplifier will have quadruple inputs, so that's a lot of wire to prep. Luckily, we got into a nice groove, stripping down about 10 leads per minute. Not bad for a pair of 40-year-old wire cutters. Now in order to tighten up our tool makers, we needed to connect each wire before plugging into the amps. This would give us some working room around the batteries and allow us to tighten up the back screws even tighter. I mean, heck, these dual inputs pop out like crazy. So be sure to hit up Toolmaker on Facebook this holiday season. Oh, the joys of bass.
With each wire prepped and ready to go, it was finally time to plug our tool makers into the amps. And believe me, once these things are tightened, they aren't going anywhere. Especially since copper is a soft metal, these set screws bite down like no tomorrow. And fortunately for us, our prep work let us go right down the line, securing the inputs as we went. Now at this point, most people get a little nervous seeing these terminals so close together. And even though we've never had any issues, we did end up adding some clear coat and stuck a little barrier between them. Any failsafe is a good failsafe, so stay tuned to see more on that. When it came to our last two amplifiers, things got a little tricky. The leads fit through the amp rack just fine, but when we started adding all 16 wires, it became quite the tight fit. So to help group the bunches, we started from the top and worked our way down. Because welding cable isn't the most flexible stuff out there, we really needed to help bend the copper into place. That's why we took particular care when plumbing everything through. After all, we really wanted this thing to pop. All we had to do now was repeat this process for the remaining 14 connections. It ended up taking quite a while to finish everything, but it was nice to just groove out and get stuff done. Once we had all the wires plugged in, things really started to come together, and then we remembered our speaker wires. Yup, it's always something. At the last minute, we decided not to use the same holes from before, so that meant drilling out new ones and trying our best not to ruin our precious carpet. There's nothing worse than catching your carpet in a drill bit. Luckily, there's an easy way to avoid that. Just gotta set the drill to reverse, and then wait as the bit burns our perfect hole right through the damn thing. Once you see wood, you're good to bust right through. that everything was plugged into our amplifiers, the next big step was putting each battery back into its place. Our current 12 volt bank makes up just over 1000 amp hours. And with the plans with adding lithium soon, things are only getting more powerful. But until then, it's still a tight fit with all group 31s. Once the bus bars were busted out, we knew we were getting close. Just had to line them up so the holes in the copper matched the holes in the battery terminals. And thanks to our prep work, we could literally just go down plugging in the wires according to where we put them. Basically from the outsides going in. That would keep everything nice and symmetrical, and with that mindset, things moved right along.
At this point, we were ready for that exciting moment of charging up the amplifiers. It's pretty funny though, no matter how many times we've connected an amp to a battery, that first initial spark always gets the nerves jumping like crazy. With all the connections looking mighty fine, we just had to film some close-ups. So enjoy the next 30 seconds of sheer tastiness. Next up, the RCA wires. In order to run six pairs, we've been using our good old cock box from Scott Bowman Customs. It's an easy and clean looking way to distribute the voltage coming from the head unit. The only different thing this time around are the elbows we use just below the main input. This was to avoid hitting the wires coming from the front, but the rest of the amplifiers were able to accept the RCAs without any adapters. Just had to pull tight a couple wires and she'd be ready to rock. Well, you tubulus, it's about that time. Holy smokes, the Crescendo 5500s are looking great. This has been one hell of an install, tons of steps along the way, and really, we only have about one final step left to do, and uh, that is tuning the amplifiers. And I gotta be honest, we already have most of the pots already adjusted before we installed them, such as the subsonic, low pass, all that's been taken care of. Uh, so all we have to do now is take care of our gains. It is really hard to get my camera in here, albeit because of this big battery bank just below us. So what we've done is uh, created this little reference point with this screw glued onto our little bit here. It's gonna fit perfectly into our Nendos and give us a little reference point as well as a little visual aid. All right, so we're about to turn on the amplifiers for the first time here. Why don't you give it a nice little tweak there, Danny? Oh my God, she's humming. She is fucking humming. Blue lights all over the place, guys. You can hear the fans beneath it. They're sucking real good over there and blowing real hard over there. Oh my God. It's looking great, guys. All right, so now I'm just gonna show you guys that all the amplifiers are matching. Just was too close to get that camera in there. We've got 1.07 on that amplifier. We're gonna switch it over here. It's just gonna be backwards, and we've got 1.06 on that one. It should be 1.07, but I mean, it's only one. Oh, there it goes, right there. So now we'll jump over to another one here and test that. And here's another one. 1.07 well he can't get much better than that and there we go there's our last amplifier all of them are matching perfectly so it just sucks i wasn't able to get most of it on film but you guys get the gist of it all i did was just stick that thing right in there and adjust the pots accordingly and uh, we did most of it before the amplifiers were even put in there so we kind of beat the hassle there if you know what i'm saying so let's go ahead and jump back in here because we still have those tones playing holy crap it's vibrating on one volt on one volt we got all this vibration happening. Holy shit. These things aren't even on yet. And we got some flex going on in the house. Holy Moses. So there we go. We turn that bitch down. Let's take one good look at these. Oh man. So what do you guys say? Let's go for a quick little uh, quick little ride in this video. All right, here we go. Starting her up. Again, everything's breaking in here. Let's turn the voltmeter on if we can remember which one it is. All right, so we're at 13. That's resting voltage right now. So let's go ahead and start her up, guys. Oh boy. Nice. She's doing good. Resting off RPM wise, doing real good. 14.9. Friggin' damn near five year old Iraqi alternators. 68 degrees. All right, so here we are, Utubulus, at the secret spot. About to do some testing. Let's go ahead and do some sealed up on the dash here with the SSA APM1. We're just gonna go ahead and uh, 
use the same meter that we were using at S Spring Break Nationals here. It's just as accurate as Term Lab. So let's go ahead and get everything ready here. We got real time action sealed up. Our voltage is a little low because we don't have as much uh, battery juice as we'd like to right now. All right, let's go ahead and reset everything. 38 hertz. Make sure everything's good to go. It's been a long time coming, guys. Been waiting a long time for this. Reset that. That's 37. Here's 38. All right, here we go, guys. The moment of truth. Give some RPMs. Here we go. Oh, shit! There it is! My fucking 60, guys! My 60! Oh, my gosh! There it is! Oh, my word! There, I have to screenshot it. I'm gonna fucking don't wanna push refresh. My five, there it is, my oh, six years in the making. Clean ass fucking wave, 160.24 at 38 hertz. Screenshot this right there. Oh God, guys, hold on, I gotta settle down. Gotta settle down. That's my first 160, guys. This is my first wall that I've ever built, ever. And I, it's my first 60, so I'm pretty freaking proud of that, guys. Let's turn up the brightness here. We got the PSI Recones, the Crescendo 5500s, Iraqi alternators, and we still got more stuff in store for upgrades, guys. Oh my God! Uh, look at the. Let's take a look at the tool makers one more time. Oh God damn, guys. Let's look at it. Woo! Good word. Everything's so sexy. Got to clean off my lens a little bit, but there she is, guys. She came together in my goals, my all-time life goals, not life goals. You know, not all time life goals, but a really big goal of mine was to hit a 160 with the first build that I ever built. And this was the first build that we ever built together right on YouTube. So thanks for joining the whole process, guys. I knew that once we had real adequate power, we would be exactly where we needed to be. So there she is, guys, Frankenstein sitting on 160 decibels. Woo! And lo and behold, we got Danielle right over here. She friggin' was there for the big moment. I am so freaking happy, guys. So let's big a slip, a big thumbs up for EXO. Oh, I'm so, I can't, I just gotta say big thanks to Richard and Michelle and Dominic and all the people who helped make Frankenstein a real possibility with me living in Tennessee for the longest time building this fucking thing. I couldn't have done it without the help of all those guys at Tech Force Services, PSI, Iraqi, Second Skin, Crescendo, and many more people behind the scenes that to go unmentioned. But I just gotta say thanks for watching the videos all these years, and I just gotta shut the fuck up. I gotta, I gotta shut up. This has been a great build video. Be sure to, you know, share this video on Facebook. All right, until the next video, this is EXO, signing out. Woo!